Hello, hello, and happy Wednesday! This week I'm in the mood for another geologic abstract and I'm going to work on this one using some more neutral colors and I'm going to work with a metallic color that I really like that I also don't use very often. It's called polar white and I want to see how I can sort of mimic the look of ice without actually, of course, recreating ice. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I also want to play a little bit more with the effects of coarse grain salt and I want to see if I can create something different using the salt and so that's why I have added a little bit more water and pigment to my paper. There's a little bit of a glare on the paper right now because there's a lot of water um, and I, I know that's making it a little bit harder for you to see but hopefully you'll see what it is I'm doing once I add the salt. Um, but yes, there is a little bit more water than usual. I'm adding quite a bit of pigment and I'm going to add my coarse grain salt in that area where the paint and water are sort of pooling a little bit because I do think that with coarse grain salt in particular, it is helpful to have your paper be a little bit wetter. Oops, I guess I got my lids mixed up. <laughs> so this is indeed coarse grain salt, not fine grain salt, as it said on um, the lid of my container. And you'll notice that when I'm putting the salt on the paper, the paint and the water start to sort of pool around the grains of salt. And I think that's going to create um, an even more pronounced effect. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what this is going to look like once it's all dry. Now I'm actually working on adding some fine grain salt and I'm being very careful not to add any in the areas where I put the coarse grain salt because I really want to see how pronounced those effects can be with the coarse, uh, the coarse grain salt and so I don't want the fine grain salt to have any effect in those areas. But I also do want to create some texture all over my background. In this case, the effects of the coarse grain salt versus the fine grade salt are really, really obvious. And I'm super happy that I applied the paint as I did, applied my coarse grain salt, and then came in with some fine grain salt in the other areas. I think the difference in the textures is really neat and I'm looking forward to creating my geologic abstract rocks around these cool marks that are now in my paper. I worked mostly with neutral tint when I was creating the initial background, but I do think it's important for me to have a little bit of uh, a different color surrounding my rocks just to make them stand out a little bit more. So I'm coming in with some dark blue in um, the, sh the form of Payne's Gray. I believe I'm using a lot of Payne's Gray and I am mixing some neutral tint in there as well so that I don't veer too far off course because I, my intention really is to stay pretty neutral with this painting. And so, um, yeah, I think it's important to mix that neutral tint that I used initially along with my dark blue.
Unfortunately, I added my salt a little bit too late in this area when I was painting the previous layer and the paper had dried quite a bit and so there weren't any effects uh, created with the salt in this area. So I'm going to come back in with a much more pigmented dark blue and I'll add some more paint and water and then I'll add some salt to add some texture in this area as well because I do think it's important. Um, for me to do so in order to make the painting look more cohesive and balanced. This looks much better to me. So I've removed all the salt from my paper now that it's dry and I'm coming in with my extra fine tip black pen and I'm gonna start creating some vertical lines going down. I want to sort of give the impression with those lines that maybe instead of looking down on the ground you're looking at a rock wall and those vertical lines are representing the rock wall if you will. It's an abstract painting so <laughs> <laughs> just go with me <laughs> um, and you know a little bit later when I start adding my iridescent paints I'll use these lines to help with the illusion of that rock wall and hopefully create what will look a little bit like a, some ice um, flowing down the wall I don't know if this is gonna work or not I've never done it so <laughs> like I said, please bear with me and uh, hopefully this will all work out in the end. And if it doesn't, I will at least have had fun making this little painting. <laughs>
my rocks really don't look anything like rocks at the moment so I'm gonna work with my fountain pen to add some lines around them and give them a little bit more definition by filling in some of the areas in between the rocks. use my Cuddle Lola dot pen to add some stippling around my rocks. The background is pretty dark so I'm not 100% sure you're going to see that stippling a lot but it's only my second time using the dots pen and I feel like I need a little bit more practice with it and I love the fact that it is far less taxing on my wrist and elbow than just trying to create stippling with my fountain pen. So I'm really, really so thankful and appreciative for having been introduced to this little pen and uh, it has quickly become <laughs> one of my favorite supplies. Um, yeah, I can see myself using this for quite a long time. I've really been having some struggles with my wrist and elbow over the last uh, few months and it's just gotten worse and worse and so I, I really need to be doing something different and I think this is going to help me change the way I work and I'm again very thankful for having discovered it. Alrighty, it's time for a little bit of shine. So. I've pulled out my Kramer Pigments palette along with my regular palette and what I've done is I've mixed, mixed some of that polar white with the mixture of dark blue that I had on my palette. I really want to start off light uh, in adding some of this um, sparkle, sparkle I guess to my painting and Maybe it's a way for me to sort of ease into it, considering I'm not feeling 100% sure this is the way to go, but I do want to try it and see if I can, um, if I can create something different. I've been thinking about icicles now for a while, and I've been wanting to make a watercolor painting that sort of had the look of ice trickling down rocks, but I wasn't 100% sure how to do it. And so this is a an abstract way I guess for me to to give this a try and I think it's gonna work out but I'm not a hundred percent sure so I'm um, starting slowly and as I get more courage or feel more confident with what I'm doing I'll probably stick to adding a little bit more of that uh, polar white uh, but we'll see as we go along That light wash of polar white with the dark blue that I added in the background is very very faint and so I'm feeling a little bit more brave and I'm going to start adding more of that polar white to the painting but I am going to try to do it in such a way where I um, blend it into the painting more. I don't want it to be too too stark although I will probably add some little areas here and there where it's just pure opaque polar white. Um, because it is a beautiful sparkly white and I do want it to, sh to show up in my painting and I think it's going to be good in terms of adding some light value contrast but I really don't want to detract from the look of my beautiful rocks and all of those beautiful 
marks that the coarse grain salt left and so I'm going to be careful about adding it very thinly over the rocks and then I'm going to go back into the background and see how I can add a little bit more of it. Darn it, I forgot to turn my camera on when I was adding the splatters of the polar white. So I added them, <laughs> let them dry, and now I'm coming in with my micro mini brush again and I'm adding some splatters of the darker color of paint so that there's some more dark value contrast alongside the splashes of the polar white. And I think once I'm done doing this, I'll be ready to call this painting done. For me, there really is something magical about pulling off that tape and revealing the crisp edges of the painting that's now complete. Um, I really like this part of the process. It's kind of like <laughs> a bit of a, a gift at the end of the process, as if the painting process itself was not a gift enough. Um, anyway, it's just to say that I really do enjoy this part of the process almost as much as creating the painting itself because there's something that sort of brings the whole painting to completion by just removing that tape. My little vertical ice flows are very subtle but I do think they add something to the painting and I'm super happy that I added them. While it really is quite amazing the effects the coarse grain salt can have and how different it can be from the fine grain salt. Both are equally beautiful and they add just a little something nice to the painting. It was a really simple little project to create but I had so much fun and I hope you enjoyed watching this video too. Thank you again for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!